But where's my laptops? I'm iCave okay, Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest news, leaks and rumours, some of which don't turn out to be true apparently, all you need to do is like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. And every cloud has a silver lining so we're going to be able to talk about uh, MacBook rumours for a bit longer, I guess. That That's cool right? We love talking about rumours but it would have been nice to see what they look like. So everyone basically was wrong. So what happened yesterday? Where was our hardware? Why did we think it was coming? Why did it not end up coming? Uh, we can answer some of those questions. We can't answer all of them, but we'll give it a good go. So we were definitely expecting to be getting uh, MacBooks yesterday. We were expecting to see M1X. I've been talking about it for ages. It made sense. I think I know why we didn't see it. But all of the evidence running up to the event said that we would see it. It was only literally in the last probably 24 hours before the event that we were hearing, nope, there's no hardware coming, nope, there's no hardware coming. Love to Dream was saying it. I was arguing with people in the comments section in the live chat yesterday saying, no, Love to Dream's retired, he doesn't know what he's talking about anymore. Yeah, but he's got an 80-something percent track record and John Prosser's only 78%. It's probably lower than that now. But Love to Dream is basically out there in the supply chain somewhere. We don't know who he is. We don't know if it's even a he. Could be a she. Could be a they. No need to judge. Knows what it's talking about. <laughs> Turns out. Sorry. So what happened? Why didn't we see it? I will give you my best guess. I think it's the displays that have delayed it. I know that they are up to speed on producing the displays now, but there were definitely issues with uh, mini LED displays in the past. They took uh, a lot longer to get right than everyone expected, which is also, we think, why the iPad Pro was delayed from when we thought the event was going to be in March through to um, uh, through to April. Uh, I think that was because they just did not have any displays to put in them. Now, these are still constrained right now, mainly because of the displays. So even though the uh, production is now up to speed and they're getting something like 95% yields on these displays, I think the big issue that they've had is because they were backed up beforehand. They didn't have the displays that they needed for the iPad Pros. We have a lot of production delays on iPad Pro. I think that they've basically turned as much of that production as they can that they had working that would have been going towards these laptops, towards these MacBook Pros, and they've turned it to iPad Pro to try and get as many of those out the door as they can because they've already got the orders for those and it just makes sense to try and catch up on that before they introduce something else with the same technology even though they've now nailed how to make it. That's my thoughts on that. We're going to get into a bit of what was announced software-wise. Uh, there was some really good stuff, uh, and then it kind of went a bit downhill for me, I've got to say. Uh, it started off really exciting with the stuff they were announcing for uh, iOS. Not any of the stuff I think that we were expecting, so I didn't hear any mention of food tracking. I might have missed some stuff, because there was a lot going on yesterday. Um, but FaceTime screen sharing, that's cool. We kind of had heard that that was probably going to be coming but it also works cross-platform, so you can share your Mac screen with someone on an iPhone. Uh, you can also now FaceTime with someone on an Android or a Windows device by sending them a link, so it kind of works more like a Zoom meeting. I like what they've done there. Voice isolation, if it works as well as they were showing with that, with that thing going in the background, what was it? They were using a leaf blower in the background? That looked incredible, if it is as good as they say. I can't imagine it is as good as they said, but we will see. Uh, portrait mode video. This one is very exciting to me because last year when uh, I, uh, when Apple were announcing, or at least we were hearing rumours that the iPhone 12 Pros would be coming with LiDAR sensors, which is exactly what happened, I said they will use it to do portrait mode video so you can have that nice blurry bokeh background for bloggers and stuff like that who are, you know, performing to camera. If they've got the technology to do it in FaceTime, I have no doubt that they will be able to do it in the main video app as well and share play so you can now do kind of watch parties i think netflix has something like this already but you can basically be chatting to someone while watching something together it synchronizes the way that you're watching it so that you're kind of chatting about the same things when they happen it's nice you know there's a lot of this stuff is cross-platform that looks really cool uh, they also brought in uh 
Focus, which is kind of an extension of Do Not Disturb. That was something that we'd heard about. And that, I think, is also the app that we kind of saw reflected in the glasses for the WWDC promo ahead of time. I think that's what that one was. Uh, but it basically lets you set a status so that you can adjust which notifications come through and which don't. Um, and you can also get daily or kind of a morning update and an afternoon update of kind of a summary of the notifications that you had through, which is pretty nice too. One of the more magical features that we saw was live text on photos. So I think that's what they called it. But basically you can take a picture or you can look at an image that you've got on Safari. And if it's got a phone number in it, that becomes clickable. That's really cool. Or you can kind of highlight the text in an image and paste it as text into a document which is also really cool. So you can kind of do handwritten notes and then take a photo of it and then turn that into text that you keep uh, as a kind of notes file. Very, very useful. Um, then we moved into oh, visual lookup as well. So uh, Apple will use machine learning to identify dogs and cars and like the breed of a dog and all that sort of stuff. I focused a lot on dogs here, but you get the gist of what we're saying is it's quite precise. Um, and you can basically look up what the breed of dog is from just the image of the dog, which is really cool. I uh, don't think that's something that is massively out there at the moment. I think Google Lens does something similar and Google Cloud AI you can use to kind of identify what's in an image too. But I think this is kind of going to be more seamless and more usable for most people. So that's pretty cool. Um, Home keys, car keys, and hotel keys being added to wallet. I think the hotel key one was really cool because if you check in um, online, you can have your room number and your key sent to your phone before you even get to the hotel. So you don't have to bother with the reception. You just walk straight up to your room, tap your, uh, your phone on the window, and away we go. Pretty awesome. Weather gets a design update. Maps. The stuff in Maps looks amazing. They seem to have modelled the interiors of a lot of Apple stores. So you can see through the windows. You can see all the tables and stuff like that. But also big landmarks in different cities, which looks really, really nice. And I think all of this is getting ready for um, using AR, whether it's AR glasses or AR on your phone, uh, in order to get better directions and kind of be in this kind of AR world. AirPods got some interesting stuff with... Um, Hearing assist, so you can use AirPods, basically AirPods Pro, I think it is, as essentially a hearing aid type device, not a medical one, but you know, uh, helps to boost up the conversation from people around you by identifying who you're talking to. That's pretty awesome. And also announce notifications on AirPods. If you've had AirPods in the past and you've had Siri can announce messages that you get, basically read your texts to you, you can now use it for specific notifications and kind of combined with some of the home uh, features, it can tell you when there's a package sitting outside your door. Very nice if you've got your AirPods in. Um, obviously, we had some new privacy stuff. Uh, iPad OS was a little bit underwhelming for the people that were expecting to be getting like Mac OS on their iPads. Um, I did tell you that that's why you shouldn't buy it. I did a whole video saying don't buy the uh, don't buy the new iPad until you've watched this because I, there's a lot of people assuming they're going to get way more power in the operating system which I didn't think was coming and to be honest the M1 in the iPad was never going to be the huge leap that everyone thought um, it's not some sort of magic that they've put an M1 into the iPad Pro the iPad Pro was always going to get the A14X which is what the M1 is they just added a couple of extra bits like the Thunderbolt connectivity and stuff like that so I mean I wasn't expecting huge things for iPad. Uh, they did address multitasking, but they basically gave you uh, a multitasking menu at the top of the screen and a shelf, uh, which is kind of like desktops on the Mac. But it, it doesn't make it more powerful. It's just different ways of accessing the different multitasking stuff that you've got. It's not floating windows. It's not like Mac OS. It's still an iPad because guess what? You're using an iPad. Uh, I didn't notice much about using external displays, which is the other thing that people were very um, vocal about wanting. But I think that's going to come more down to app manufacturers, uh, like app developers bringing in multi, uh, multi display support to their apps. You're not going to put other apps on that other display because it doesn't make any sense. You can't interact with it. So 
I mean, the only thing that would make sense is maybe if you had, like, a slide-over control that you had for Netflix on your main iPad, and you could have Netflix playing on an external display. But at that point, why not just kind of airplay to it? Uh, it's a difficult one. And also, the Pro apps were not introduced at WWDC, but thinking about it now, they wouldn't have done that. That would probably be something that comes in September when the, uh, when the operating systems are announced, because these are standalone apps that you're going to buy separately, probably, or subscribe to separately, probably. Um, but there might well be some stuff that comes out this week where they're talking about how the power of the iPad and the M1 can be used for more advanced video editing. But I'm kind of pleased for LumaFusion that they get a little bit longer before they're probably overtaken by Final Cut. And it seems that Apple really likes LumaFusion as well. They keep talking about it. They keep highlighting it in their presentations. Uh, there was some other stuff with iCloud. iCloud Plus now exists, which basically gives you a VPN, uh, which is called Private Relay. Um, and a digital legacy program. That's an interesting, if slightly morbid thing, where when you die, you can kind of have already set up some family members that will be able to get access to your account, your information, and so on, assuming that they can provide your death certificate to Apple, um, and they've already been set up by yourself. So your data doesn't just disappear kind of because nobody can get access to it. There's now a system in place for that. Uh, account recovery with phone a friend. That was a really interesting one, I thought, where your friends won't get access to your account, but they'll be able to kind of receive the code for you um, in order to recover your account if you forget passwords. That's very nice. Uh, and the private relay is basically Apple's own VPN. It's only going to be available in countries that basically don't care about VPNs existing, I guess. So Saudi Arabia, it's not going to be available. China, a few others. Um, which is a bit sad. That, that kind of feels like Apple pandering to those countries and their governments a little bit. But at the same time, there is a there's a level of you have to play the, by the rules of the countries that you want to operate in. That's kind of your cost of entry for being a company, unfortunately. And especially one that's as big as Apple, uh, where there's a lot of eyes on you. Uh, health, there's some new stuff added to health at this point. There was a lot of talk on Twitter about how boring WWDC was getting, and I was a bit like, mm, I understand that, but Apple also puts out a lot of stories about how many people's lives they've saved with fall detection or being able to call the emergency services from a car wreck when you can't get anywhere near your phone, being able to do that from your watch, or identifying issues with your health ahead of time with the uh, irregular rhythms, all the other stuff that they do. So... I get that it's not the most exciting stuff to be talking about when we'd much rather have uh, new colours for a logo uh, or new colours for app icons. But this is kind of the important stuff that Apple does. Uh, and the same with the privacy stuff that they're doing. So uh, on offline speech recognition for Siri is very helpful. So so Siri will be able to do stuff within their, um, within their apps. You know, App commands will be able to be processed on device now. Uh, mail privacy protection so that um, pixels in uh, email marketing won't be able to kind of link back to websites that you access. And app privacy reports, the same as you get with Safari privacy reports. You can already see where websites are tracking you. You'll be able to see which apps are using your camera, your microphones, all that sort of stuff, and how often over the past seven days. Very, very nice. Um, we also had, uh, from the health point of view, I know I'm bouncing around here a little bit, uh, mindfulness app being updated, which I'm guessing is like MindKit, because we didn't hear about a Mind app, so I think the Breathe app is becoming mindfulness. And then Sleep, they are tracking respiratory rates, again, to kind of check if your health is deteriorating. Again, very important stuff that they're doing. Not exciting stuff, but important stuff. Uh, portrait Apple watch faces. These look quite nice. So they're using the separation. So they're using the layering that the portrait mode images give you to be able to kind of pop your time and things like that within the depth of the image. It looks nice. Um, how many people will use it? I don't know. But the apparently the photos faces for watches are the most popular. I would never have guessed that because I want to have as much information as I possibly can on my watch at all times. 
Uh, and then there was something about smart homes. Uh, I was starting to get a bit tired by that point. Um, so we will talk more about smart home stuff because I want to do smart home stuff. I've not really got into it. We've got a couple of plug sockets um, that are connected in the house, but I don't think we have the relay that would then make them work with uh, HomeKit. So I need to sort that out. Uh, but I would like to get more into home automation stuff. So if any of you guys are into it already, let me know any good links down in the comments section. macOS Monterey. This was our big reveal of the new name of macOS. We knew it was going to be Monterey or uh, Mammoth, I think we thought. Um, Universal Control. That looks awesome. Being able to stick your iPad next to a MacBook and an, I uh, and an iMac. And then being able to move across all of those things and just drag files from one to another. Very magical. Not quite sure how that works. Uh, like, how will it work with a display with a Mac Mini? Because the Mac Mini might not be in the middle uh, of where your display is. So, there's a lot of things that we need to kind of just work out exactly how this is working. But, a very, very cool concept. Um, I'm just hoping that it will work with stuff that has external displays as well. And it's not going to be kind of very limited to just built-in displays on stuff because it can kind of sense where it is so um and is there some sort of backing back end kind of setup that you need to do i don't know airplay to mac very cool shortcuts for mac very cool uh might upset some people that are used to using automator if they don't bring all of that uh kind of level of control to it but i think it's going to be cool anyway new safari design looks really clean is it going to be more usable? Don't know. Is it going to manage naughty tabs that are using far too much um, memory better? I don't know. Uh, because it's definitely better than Chrome already. But is it going to get even better? Because I sometimes have a tab that's using a gig of memory. And it's sadly, it's stuff like um, Patently Apple, Mac Rumors, 95 Mac. It's a lot of the big kind of Apple sites, and I think it's because of the ads that are being served on those sites that are causing issues. Now, I'm not going to be one of these guys that uses an ad blocker because I don't think that's fair because I'm using their information uh, for, you know, I want to get the information from them. They should be paid for it. However, is there a way that we can make ads a little bit lighter weight on the systems that we're looking at them on? Uh, I would hope so, but I don't know. Uh, in terms of me installing beta software, developer betas, it's not going on my phone uh, because that is my main camera. I can't afford for it to not work for this YouTube channel. I'm not going to put it on my main Mac uh, because that's, you know, that's also running the way that we make this channel. I can't risk doing it at this point. Uh, I have got another phone that I might put it on, but it's not got Face ID, so it's not going to have all those features which is a bit annoying. Um, and I don't have a Mac that I can put it on at the moment. I was hoping that we would get an M1X Mac Mini, which would then uh, come in and become my main machine. And my M1 Mac Mini would have become my test machine for the betas and that kind of thing. However, it's not happened. So um, Apple's lost some sales right there. As I say, don't be harsh on the leakers. Uh, obviously, we only report stuff that's leaked. Uh, and I tell you kind of what makes sense to me. Um, that's the way that we work. We kind of analyse the leaks. We're not about leaking stuff ourselves. That's not what we do on this channel. And I keep saying we, but it's just me. There's no editors. There's no anyone else. Um, there's a horrible shadow over here because uh, I'm recording in a different part of the room today. But that's what we got. Uh, there weren't many questions coming in in IK of Answers. We did do a live stream last night. Saran Byte did join us and he did an epic job of filling in for me when I had to keep running off for the kids. So thank you so much to Saran Bites. Um, go and check out his channel. If you haven't picked up the Dub Dub t-shirt yet, uh, please buy one to make me happier about my life uh, without the new Max. Um, at icavedave.com forward slash merch we will do a full show tomorrow with all of your questions so please if you have questions on anything hashtag icaveanswers down in the comments we'll catch up on any of the handful that we've had already thanks so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow